There are five actions which relate directly to the table. Let's take a look at those now. So we'll create a little sample table here that we can work with. And in this case, I'll just go ahead and put in a series of numbers. These are just random numbers. Okay, that's pretty good. So the first action we're going to look at is the concatenate action. So that's table, concat, and then you've got the brackets. And inside the brackets, we're going to put the name of our table. So in this case, my table. Then you're going to put in the chosen delimiter. So what this is going to do is going to concatenate all those values together into a string. And you can choose which character you'd like to use as a delimiter. In our case, we use a comma. So I'll put a quotation mark, a comma, and then another quotation mark. And then we're going to put in the start value. In this case, we want to start from element number one. And then you have to put in the end value. In this case, we want to do the whole table. So you've got a couple choices here. You can put in minus one. That means to the end. Or you can use this. Table, all. So I'll go ahead and use that. All right, so that's going to concatenate all those values together into one string. Let's go ahead and set up a dialog message box and test it out. Leave the title blank, and then I'll just put this value here into the body. So I'm going to go ahead and assign this to a variable. We'll say result equals, and then we'll go ahead and type that result in here. Okay, so let's preview this. Okay, as you can see, it did exactly what we expected. It concatenated all those values into a single string using our comma as a delimiter. So this is pretty handy action if you're working with, uh, for example, comma delimited files and uh, things like that. There's a, a variety of applications where you'll want to use this particular function. Okay, so that's table concatenate. Now let's take a look at the table count action. So this is the second of the five table actions. So we're just going to go ahead here and say result equals table count and then we're just going to go ahead and enter the name of our table in here. In, the, in this case it's my table. And then we'll go ahead and display that value in a message box. We could just type the function right into the dialog message action if we want, but just for these purposes I'm just doing it this way. Okay, let's go ahead and preview that. As you can see it says 8. Now what it's doing there is it's counting the number of elements within our table. Let's go back to our script editor here and you can see indeed there is eight elements inside our table. So the table count action counts the elements in a table and puts that into a variable. So you can use that uh, for manipulating your table and so forth. Okay, so let's look at the next action which is the table insert action. Now I'm going to go ahead and put back the table concatenate action here and I'll show you why in a sec. This is just going to be for display purposes. Okay, and now when I insert that value, we'll be able to see it. Okay, so let's go ahead and type in the table insert action. In this particular case, you need to provide three pieces of information. We're going to provide the, the table name, and then we're going to provide the data which we wish to insert, so in this case we'll insert, um, or sorry, next is the position which we wish to insert the data at. So in this case let's insert it at position number 7, and then we'll insert, let's say, a, a numeric value, like 512. Let's go ahead and preview that. As you can see here, 512 has been inserted here at the 7th position. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Five hundred and twelve has now become the seventh number in this string. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the opposite action of this, which is table remove. Now, in this particular case, you can uh, remove any element you like, and you can either store that in a variable, which will return the value that you've re that you've removed or not. It's up to you. So let's take a look at both. We'll say table remove. Okay. And now in this particular case we won't return the value. We'll just go ahead and type in our table. So my table and then which element we wish to remove. Let's remove element number six. 
Let's go ahead and preview this. And you'll see now that the value 1200 is missing from our string here, and that's because we've removed it. It was in position number 6, and we removed it using the table remove action. Now let's take a look at storing that in a result variable. So in this particular case, I'm going to comment out this line just for the purposes of this demo, and I'm going to say result equals table remove my table 6. What it's going to do is return the value of the sixth element as it removes it from that table. Okay, so let's go ahead and preview that and we'll see what it says. It says 1200 and that's because that was the, the value of the element which it removed, in this case the sixth element. Okay, so at the same time as it removed that value from the table, it also stored that in a result variable. So you can use that if you need to manipulate your table or to keep track of what you're doing. Okay, so let's take a look at the final table action, table sort. Alright, we have a table here which is um, out of order, numbers that are out of order. Let's go ahead and sort them. So we'll say table sort. And we're going to provide the name of the table, which in this case is my table. And then we're just going to type nil for now. We'll come back and look at this in a sec. That's a comparison function that you can attach to this action. But for now we're just going to type in nil. And then we're going to go ahead and put our table concatenate um, uncomment that line and go ahead and preview and we'll see what happens. Now you can see it sorted our values. In this case it sorted it from the lowest value to the highest value and it displayed them that way. Okay, so that's what the table sort function does. Now let's take a look at the comparison function option. Let's say we write a function which compares two values and returns true in one of the cases. Okay, so for example let's say we'll say function reverse and I think this is the same example that's in the help file, so you can always refer to the help file. As a matter of fact, now I remember it is. Okay, so we'll use v1 for value 1 and v2 for value 2. And we'll compare those. So we'll say if v1 is larger than v2, then return true. Okay. And then we're going to say else return false. And this will basically sort things in reverse order now because it's going to compare it like that and when we apply this function here so instead of nil we'll type in reverse and this is the optional comparison function for the table sort action when we go ahead and preview this you'll see what happens is it actually sorts it in reverse order because of that comparison function so those are the table actions and let's go ahead and move on to the next lesson.